few Japanese sports cars occupy the enthusiast's heart quite like the Nissan Z. It's been providing us with lightweight, accessible rear drive thrills for decades. Although it must be said that the outgoing 370Z felt just about exactly that old. With a dated tech package and a torquey but thrashy V6 engine, the now discontinued 370Z was long overdue for replacement. And finally, finally, that day has arrived. I hope you're as excited as I am to become acquainted with the 2023 Nissan Z. Before I tell you anything more, I have to ask, please be sure to like and subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. First, a quick history lesson. In the 1960s and 70s, some automotive enthusiasts began moving away from huge and hugely powerful muscle coupes towards smaller, lighter, more nimble sports cars. Of course, at the time, the only offerings were either expensive, impractical, or unreliable. My family used to own an MGB of that vintage, so I'm intimately aware of the last two points, at least. Then, in 1970, the Datsun 240Z arrived. With a silky smooth inline six underneath that long hood and a perfectly respectable cargo area underneath this rear hatchback, the 240Z was practical, efficient, reliable, and even decently inexpensive. And yet it still offered performance that absolutely shamed British sports cars of the era and even nipped at the heels of the much more expensive Porsche 911. The inline six went away and a V6 arrived on the 1984 300ZX, which also featured the edgy geometric styling indicative of the decade. That of course evolved into the sensuous, graceful 1990 300ZX, which also offered a super sporty twin turbocharged V6 engine. The 300ZX lasted until the 1996 model year when the whole Z car family was discontinued. But you can't keep a good vehicle down because the 350Z arrived just a few years later in 2003. That evolved into the 2009 370Z, which persisted mostly unchanged for the next 11 model years before being discontinued after 2020. Although it was pretty dated by the time they gave it the axe, it still offered simple muscular driving dynamics and a thoroughly reasonable price befitting its forebears. All that's old is new again, and the 2023Z wants to offer a little bit of everything to its buyers. The accessible and flingable nature of the Z's ancestors, as well as the hot and heavy performance of a modern sports car. That bears out in the spec chart as well. Even though it starts out at just under $40,000, the Nissan Z has more power than any variant of the Toyota Supra, a Ford Mustang EcoBoost, hell, even the 718 Cayman has less power and is slower to 60. This Nissan isn't actually all new since it has the Z34 platform of the outgoing 370Z, but enough about it has been massaged and modified to help it keep up with those aforementioned sports car rivals. And let's be honest, the front midship, rear drive, incredibly stiff platform of the 370Z didn't really need fixing. Luckily, the changes that they did make seem to help this new Z absolve all of its predecessors since. And it does so rather stylishly, with phenomenal retro styling cues from stem to stern. The headlights, front grille, and hood bulge echo those of the original Z cars of the 1970s, while the blacked out roof panel is meant to recall the T-tops found on the 280ZX and 300ZX in the 1980s. Meanwhile, these taillights are pure 90s, looking for all the world like something that belongs in an issue of Sport Compact Car Magazine. Inside, the 2023Z is its own thing, with rectilinear vents, either an 8 or a 9 inch infotainment touchscreen, and a standard 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. Three dash-mounted gauges link the new Z with its predecessors, providing turbocharger and voltage system information at a glance. Now, curiously, this is the first Z car in history to actually have a smaller engine than the vehicle that it replaces. But don't worry, the three liter V6 might be down a little bit on displacement, but it does have two turbochargers and an air to water intercooler that allow it to spin out a healthy 400 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque. That's up quite a bit over its predecessor, I think by about 68 horses, so you're definitely gonna feel it. What's more, the engine is so eager to rev and so willing to spin right up to its 7,000 RPM redline that it feels alive and sassy and exciting, so both the stopwatch and the seat of your pants are going to tell you that this thing is indeed faster than the vehicle it replaces. It's a good thing then that the platform and suspension have both been enhanced to help this legendary Z car handle well. Key reinforcements in the front and rear subframes give it much more body rigidity than before, and larger diameter monotube dampers help it maintain contact with the road without exacting a harsh ride. Revised geometry for the front double wishbone and rear multi-link suspension help this car have better straight line stability and improved steering response, while lightweight 19-inch wheels and wider, stickier rubber help this thing grip hard when prodded. This performance model also gets larger Akebono branded brakes that mean it has plenty of stopping power when it's time to rein things in. I'm not gonna lie, I had a really hard time remembering all of that technical jargon because this is such a fun car to drive on a road like this. 
there's so much grip and it really just inspires you to push a little bit harder and try a little bit more to just kind of make this thing go fast. There's plenty of torque. There's barely any turbo lag. You can kind of just mash the throttle in any gear and the turbo will begin to spool up and push you forward. It's just alive and it feels very exciting and it's tons of fun to drive. A six speed manual transmission is standard, but there is a no cost nine speed automatic if you're the kind of person who doesn't necessarily want to do the shifting for yourself. Honestly, the nine speed is a pretty good option because it selects gears very well and when it's in sport mode, it downshifts readily when decelerating. But if you're an enthusiast, I gotta tell you, you want the manual transmission. There's an automatic rev matching feature that kind of does some of the work for you if you're not in the mood. But ultimately, everything else is left up to you and you're dealing with a very nice piece of machinery here. The shifter is a little bit notchy and kind of snickety, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but otherwise the throws are short, it's not vague at all, you know exactly what gear it's in, and you have this really great positive shift action with every single gear change. Now the new Z does have electric power steering, but in spite of that, it still has plenty of feel and you can kind of tell exactly what the front tires are doing. There's a good amount of effort through the wheel as well, which really inspires confidence when you're pushing it hard through a corner. It's not all sunshine and daisies, however. This is a carryover platform, which means you do have a lot of carryover interior bits. They've done a lot to dress it up and make it look special. And honestly, the materials are pretty decent in most places, except for right here on the center console. This is just kind of some nasty, hard, scratchy plastic. And the uh, armrest cover doesn't feel particularly robust either, which is a darn shame. It kind of just cheapens the whole experience just a little bit. I'm also pretty sure that these seats carry over directly from the 370Z, which means you don't have great height adjustment on the driver's side and absolutely no height adjustment whatsoever for the passenger, which means you're kind of limited in terms of comfort. It's kind of difficult to find a place where you feel like you can spend the next three or four hours. After a long freeway drive, I think I'd probably be a little bit tired and a little bit creaky, which is something that I can't really say of the Supra. That thing feels all day comfortable. So that's kind of a bummer and a demerit in the Z's column. But ultimately, I still think I'd probably rather have it because it just feels really exciting and, and retro and vintage while also having that fantastic powertrain and a decent amount of chassis polish that kind of smooths out the bumps and makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. Ultimately though, this thing just still has loads of vintage charm, despite or perhaps because of that carryover platform from the 370Z. It's just so much fun to drive, and in a world gone digital, the new Z still feels delightfully analog. That's a very, very good thing for Nissan. The company is known for making some of the most engaging performance cars in history, ranging from the humble Sentra SER to the mighty Skyline GTR. And yet, if you look at the company's current lineup, it feels a little bit boring and appliance-like. They're competent vehicles, yes, but they're only the tiniest bit engaging. The 2023 Nissan Z could change a lot of people's perceptions, striking a perfect balance of engaging performance, adequate fuel economy, good pricing, and reasonable everyday comfort, all wrapped up in a retro package that somehow avoids feeling kitschy. These are the Nissan Z's halcyon days, and it somehow lives up to the hype.